Let's yep. chop some wood. Chopping wood Wednesday, guys. I asked this on Twitter today. With all of the scuttlebutt of college football's rule changes coming down the pipe, what was the rule that needed to be changed the most? And if you haven't read up on that, it's a lot of things that are going to try to save time in the game and cut down the, the length of these games that we watch for three and a half and four hours every Saturday. I got the number one response, speaking of the Marvin Harrison Jr. play, was targeting. And I don't know how you fix that other than to fix the enforcement of what you do. And I think that was my biggest takeaway was as I think about where college football is going, things that are changing in the game, I just have to think that whether or not they look at targeting, it's here to stay. And I know that's not something that people are too thrilled about because it is such a crazy deal. Um, but it, there, it's, it's one thing to you know protect someone's head, protect the brain cells in their skull. Uh, but when you watch these instant replays and try to enforce what's going on, the only way to adjust what we have going on is to either enforce it as an incidental targeting or I guess more of a malicious hit, like more of a NBA technical kind of foul ruling on stuff like that. So I, I don't know. I would love to hear what y'all think is the number one rule that college football needs to have changed, but I ultimately come away from everything we've learned this week about trying to cut down the time of the game. These rules aren't all going to be enforced, and we ultimately all know that the real reason these games are so long is because of the TV timeouts, but there's nothing you can do about that. If anything, uh, those timeouts are just going to get longer and longer. Yeah, I think one of the one of the things you may could do to kind of shorten the game up is um, until you're in the last ten minutes of the game, you don't stop the clock to reset for a first down. Um, you know, I like that in college as a way because you don't have a two minute warning um, as kind of an extra way to stop the clock late in the game or to slow the clock down, slow the game down. Um, but I would, I would, that would be something I would advocate for in that vein of of speeding up the game is maybe outside of the final three minutes of it or final five minutes of the game, they, they already do it with out of bounds, right? Um, I believe it's inside, outside of the last two minutes of each half, um, going out of bounds results in a small pause and then the, the play resumes. I think you, uh, you, you just keep the clock rolling on first down until the last five minutes of each half or the last three minutes of each half or whatever. So I was going to chop wood on this anyway, but it kind of um... – Kind of, kind of pertains to this conversation is I think it's got to be recruiting rules. I mean, uh, they've got to change the calendar um, because it, it's just so taxing on these coaches. You, you're seeing it now with with the coaches that are going pro, um, d- decided to go to, off to the NFL. Um, you, you just cannot have these coaches recruiting or, or being forced to recruit nonstop. So to me, that's the biggest rule. That, that I think needs to be changed, and I will change my chopping wood. Yeah, I mean, when you have coaches that are doing this year-round, and we talked about it before you came on, Palmer, just talking about Todd Munkin going, we already kind of knew that was Munkin's deal, right? Like, it was going to be a struggle to hold on to Munkin each and every year. But there are more and more coaches that we think and we tab as college football coaches – the NFL is going to start to get a lot more appealing if these calendars stay the same for their day-to-day, their month-to-month, and each and every year. There's just no rest for them. And someone tweeted at me the Don Draper line. That's what the money's for. But there's only so much money that you can make to replace the time you miss with your family, to running your body in the ground, to always recruiting your own players. I'm with you, man. That has to be addressed, and I don't think enough people really talk about it. I will say this, though. I think that you have more opportunities to be valuable at college, in the college level, than you do in the pro level. Because in the pro level, you better be able to recruit, identify, develop um, at a super high level, get the attention of grown men, gain their respect, get them to listen to you, have solid input on the guys you want that type of thing. You better be able to do that. You better be able to do it at a very, very high level or you're going to be back recruiting again because you're good at it. You know, some of these guys don't love recruiting, but they're good at it. They can relate. They can BS. They can sell. 
Um, they can do all this stuff, and you're going to see, you know, you're going to see a back and forth there. Um, but but ultimately, I think you're going to be seeing a lot of coaches that you y'all that you thought, you know, highly paid, maybe college lifers. Um, they're going to jump out there and take a shot at the NFL at the very least to see if they can get it done because it's a better lifestyle. Got anything you're chopping wood about, Jake? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to chop wood on uh, Georgia getting to go to the White House. Um, you know, Mark Weiser, uh, breaking all sorts of news. Mark Weiser's the man. I love him. Um, Mark Weiser is uh, reporting that Georgia has uh, or Georgia has been invited to the White House. Lord, listen, if Georgia goes to the White House, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. If your kids ever get a chance to go to the White House, it's great. I hope that Georgia fans and just sports fans in general can just take the time to understand the symbolism of it and what it has always mean. And it's been, it's always meant that you've accomplished something incredible. Georgia's done it back to back seasons. I don't know why they didn't go last off season. It looks like they're going to get a chance to go this off season. If they do, I hope Georgia fans really celebrate it the way it deserves to be celebrated. Their favorite team visiting the nation's capital and getting to be honored in such a way that, I mean, if you look back over the history of presidents and, you know, how many champions there are every you know few years. I mean, you're talking hundreds. You're not talking thousands. Um, you know, you're, you're talking you know, hundreds and hundreds of over the course of time of champions getting to be acknowledged at the White House. And that's pretty special. So I hope everybody gets a chance to really enjoy that. And they take the choice to enjoy that. Yeah. Warren Brinson uh, tweeted at the president this week and said it was crazy that there wasn't an invite. I never confirmed or knew whether or not that invite had or hadn't happened at that point but i did think about it and with jimmy carter and the state of health that he's in this being the state that he's from i thought it would be a no-brainer and we don't talk a lot about politics if ever on this show and i hope it's not just a political move if and when it happens but it makes too much sense to not pay tribute to the state of Georgia and to honor the team that's earned it with back-to-back national championships right now. So totally right, guys. If, uh, um, if, if that becomes a media event, Jake, are you going to try to go? I don't know. Um, I, I've been to DC a couple of times. I ain't lost anything in DC, bro. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't got no business there. It's too crowded. <laughs> right. I'm too old. Not, not one for the monuments.